with Robert Tilton. so excited about coming into your home or office or hotel room or hospital room or boat or ship or plane or taxi. I don't know where you are, but everybody's got to be someplace. And I'm excited about being here with you today because I know that I know that I know that God is going to touch you today and minister to you in a very special way. In fact, coming up today, you're going to meet some very remarkable individuals, people just like you and I who also discovered how to step out of those problems and circumstances that attack all of us, and they learned how to step into God's circle of blessings. Now, these are true documented reports confirming that Jesus can still spread a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Just as I said that, once again, it's like I, I knew that God was preparing a miracle touch from heaven just for you. Some time ago, not too long ago, just a few days ago, I began to almost like, I didn't smell it with my natural nose, but like with my spiritual nose. You know we have spiritual ears and, and spiritual eyes, and I, I smelled literally God cooking up some bread from heaven, cooking up, preparing something for you, even in the presence of your enemies. Just as I begin to say that, see, Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And before we go on these airwaves, many of you are watching us live, some may be a tape delayed, but Jesus is the same right now no matter what time of the day. And he knew you were going to be watching this broadcast. But just, I believe every day before we go on the air that out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water, divine inspiration, the gifts of the Holy Spirit to begin to operate. And I saw someone that God had put in front of this broadcast that you are in the midst of some type of troubles or a, a, a problem. And you need, and I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you by the Spirit of God, God is cooking up a miracle for you. God is cooking up something special for you, even in the midst of your enemies. I feel you. I see you. I hear you. By faith, I can, can almost feel your heart beating. And you've looked around in the natural, and it looks like there's just no way you're going to make it. But I'm telling you something, you are going to make it. You're not going to give up. You are going to go on. I was reading in my Bible this morning where David, in spite of all, the, all of the manure that was thrown at him, it just became fertilizer. I saw where David, it says that David said, I, basically, I can't go back, but I can go on. And then the scripture that stood out so strong to me today, 2 Samuel 5.10, it says, And David went on and waxed great, became great. David went on. David, in spite in spite of it all, he went on. He just didn't stay where he was in the midst of all of that turmoil and the struggles and wars and fights and jealousies and <laughs> wives and adultery and, and murder. In spite of all of that, David tapped into God's mercy and God's grace and he went on. He, he went on. He went on and became a very great man. I'm talking to you by the Spirit of God. In fact, I want to minister to you this a particular anointing. If you are, maybe several of you, but if you're that person right now that's in the midst of some pretty deep waters, David said, I went through the fire and I went through the flood, but God hath brought me out into a wealthy place. God wants to bring you not just wealth of finances, but he wants to bring you into a, 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 a healthy cultivated, beautiful place in life. In fact, in spite of all these things that have happened to you, my Bible tells me in Romans that God makes it work for your good. I want to minister to you. If you're that person, would you do something before we go any further? 
in today's broadcast, would you call me and share with my prayer ministry that you're claiming that word right now and that you're joining your faith with my faith, that God right now, that you're the one, you're claiming that word, that God's cooking up a miracle, a blessing, a, a solution to, that's a word for someone else, a solution to want a situation that you're in the midst of. And what I'm saying right now, and when you call, you're claiming that word. And when I pray in a few moments, that's, this anointing is going to touch your spirit, your heart, in your mind, and you're going to live in that, this, this new dimension of faith, of expecting, expecting, expectancy for this thing to manifest that I'm hearing in my spiritual ears, in my spiritual nose, that as we speak, God, oh yeah, 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 yeah. There it is again. It's so, so strong. God is cooking up, preparing a table, a place, a place. A place, a person, a person for you. A place, a place, a person. See, David had faith in God. He said, the God that was with me with the bear, the God that was with me with the lion, that same God will be with me with this giant. And you know, without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, that he exists, that he's a God of love and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And he just wants us to believe what he said. I want this anointing, this, 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 uh, this enablement, this ability of God to be able to reach beyond where you are and use your faith to touch this thing that God has prepared for you. Would you call me? And that, that when you call, you're releasing your faith. You're setting yourself in agreement with me when I begin to pray. And we're going to agree together for this miracle to manifest itself. I mean, to really manifest itself in your life. Amen. Every day we're seeing God perform miracles in people's lives through the power that is in the name of Jesus. God still has touches from heaven when we seek him with all of our hearts. So you don't want to miss a single minute of today's broadcast. So stay with us because the best is yet to come. He was just another happy-go-lucky kid, and at 11 years old, Robert should have had many carefree years ahead of him. But one day a friend handed him a joint, and his innocence was lost forever. From that moment on, I, I just continued in drugs, um, steadily going deeper and deeper, uh, to the point where in about eighth grade, I guess, is when every drug that was available I would try. Um, and at the time, it was quaaludes and Valiums, uh, Tunols, Secondols, Demerol, anything that was available, I would try. And I, I guess it was in about the, the eighth grade that I tried LSD for the first time. As years passed, an inner intensity drove Robert to search for new and better highs. I guess around the time I was 17, um, started doing cocaine. And uh, I can remember um, the police looking outside of our mobile home that we lived in and wondering why they weren't coming in to arrest us. Police eventually did arrest Robert and his older brother. Robert was four days shy of his 18th birthday and as a juvenile managed to avoid prison. But his brother wasn't so lucky. He received five years in the state penitentiary. Despite intense grief over his brother's imprisonment, Robert's obsession with drugs continued. Then at the age of 19, Robert was saved at a Christian rock concert. For about six months, I walked with the Lord. Um, I read the Bible, I went to church. Um, things seemed to be going all right. Um, but then I walked away from the Lord. One Easter, someone handed me a joint on Easter of all days, and, uh, and I smoked that joint, and the tremendous guilt and condemnation that I had that just seemed to attack me. Um, I thought uh, the Lord could never love me again. Um, I thought that I had just desecrated something that uh, was holy, you know. And uh, from that moment on, I thought I'll never be able to come back. Robert soon found a new love, crack cocaine. It literally became my God. I mean, I worshipped cocaine. I, 
I could not put it down, and I realized that depth. Um, I stood one day for about 11 days in my kitchen. I could not move from the place that I was planted. My feet never left that spot. I went from the counter, grabbing that cooked cocaine and putting it in the pipe and smoking it, and, and that's where I stood for almost two weeks. In the middle of a drug-induced argument with his wife, Robert fired gunshots into the ceiling. When a SWAT team arrived, he fled his house and hid in the backyard. After police found and arrested him, life as Robert knew it was over. I lost my business, I lost my home, I lost my wife. Um, I lost all my hopes. I lost everything that I ever hoped for in my life. And I just wanted to die. I just had a spirit of suicide about me. As years passed, Robert's nightmarish existence only worsened until an unexpected encounter with his television set. And pretty much smoking my last joint. And uh, I turned on the television, and as I flipped through, um, I saw Robert Tilton. And he was praying in tongues, and I just was laughing, just roaring with laughter. And as I did, he said, you there, you're smoking a joint. And I dropped the joint. And I heard him say, you just dropped it on the floor. And immediately I knew it was the Spirit of God talking to me. And I picked up that joint, and I put it out, and I began listening to his words. And he began telling me how much God loved me and uh, began telling me that I could be delivered totally and completely from these things that had me bound. And I listened for the first time. Robert not only listened, he called Success in Life's prayer line and received literature in the mail that further changed his life. And I guess the thing that probably changed me the most is a pamphlet that he sent to me, and it talked about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And one day I just said, I believe this. And as I did, I began to pray in a new prayer language. And immediately, things were being broken from me. And I could see clearly for the first time in my whole life. Today, Robert is drug-free, filling his life instead with the love and life gleaned from the pages of his favorite book. He's built me up entirely and completely. And uh, I love the Lord with all my heart, with all my mind, and all my soul. And I wouldn't have it any other way. I was dead, and now I'm alive. Reporting for Success in Life from Kansas City, I'm Patty Castleman. Another miracle. Evidence, proof that Jesus Christ can change anyone's life, including yours. You thought that you were captive to having to live the way you've been living the rest of your life. But my Bible tells me that Satan is a liar, and he tries to sell all of us a bunch of lies. Jesus Christ died for you as your substituted Calvary. Let me minister to you. Let me pray for you. Let me help you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' love can melt that heart. Several things the Lord began to speak to me about while Robert was sharing his testimony. First of all, this is just some of the fruit from this ministry. And you that are partners with us, you're seeding into souls' lives just like Robert. And he that waters others gets watered himself. Every time you pay on your vow and tithe and give offerings and help us, it comes back into your life. It's the time someone gets saved, someone gets saved in your home. Every time someone gets healed, someone gets healed. Or someone gets, gets blessed, you get blessed. Let me minister to you. First of all, secondly, wrote it down. I want to pray for every one of you who has someone in jail. Every one of you that has a loved one or someone you know that is incarcerated right now. Okay? I just feel there's a strong need to pray for, for those that are in prison, incarcerated right now. Would you call and just share that person's first name, if it's just their first name? If it's a wife, a husband, a son, a daughter, a grandchild. 
It's a strong word to pray for everyone to know Christ and to give them the strength to make it through this thing, this trial that they're in. And quickly call that person in right now. Thirdly, I want to pray for everyone that has someone that is bound by some type of addiction. Alcohol, drugs, cocaine, marijuana, speed, pills, tobacco. But you call. When you call, it's like you're saying, that's me, or this is that loved one. We're standing in the gap, in the middle, in agreement for that person. You need to quickly call right now. And then I want to pray for the salvation of those that don't know Christ as Lord and Savior. I you to call in that loved one's name who does not know Christ, or a husband, a wife that does not know Christ. There's such a special, loving presence of the Lord Jesus to reach out, to touch people, and to send the angels to cross the labors right now. And maybe you've known the Lord like Robert and you've gotten away from him. Maybe you've never, ever committed your life to Jesus. I don't mean to church, and church is scriptural, and forsake not the assembling of yourself together. Church is scriptural. God gave some to be pastors, and teachers, evangelists. Ooh, ooh, strong word to pray for loved ones that are not saved right now. In other words, they're not so they won't miss God's plan for their lives. Sin causes us to miss God's perfect will for our lives and also take us to hell. And pray that the eyes of their understanding, there's someone that's, I'm gonna pray for every person that's incarcerated. If you know someone, call in and let's, as I pray in a few minutes, we're gonna lay my hand on top of that prayer request, their name. And I'm gonna stretch my other hand out ministry of working of miracles. There's a strong word for someone. And I want to pray for you that don't know the Lord. You're not saved. You've not committed your life to Christ. You need help. You know who you are. You need, you need God to touch you. Minister to you. Would you put your hand on top of mine? It's time for you to come back to the Lord. And I want to tell you something. David was one of the greatest men in the Bible. Solomon, his first child died about Bathsheba, the child out of wedlock. But his second child, Solomon, means beloved of God, became a great, great king. David can make it and go on. You can make it and go on with your life. And what's under the blood is under the blood. God doesn't remember it. The only person who remembers it is the devil. He likes to hit us over the head and get us back into that spot. But pray this prayer, committing your life to Jesus making him Lord of your life to lead you into all that God has for you. Pray this prayer with me. God in heaven, today I acknowledge Jesus as my Savior who bore the penalties and the curses, the curse that comes with breaking spiritual law. And God, I admit that I've sinned against heaven and you and myself and fellow man. Forgive me. I receive the free gift of being righteous, justice satisfied, justified, as I accept Jesus into my heart to be born again and be a child of God. And Jesus, from this day forth, I make you Lord. Lead me. Help me. And now, my brother, my sister, by the Spirit of the living God, the anointing of God, breaks that yoke of bondage off of you in the name of Jesus. From the top of your head, the sole of your feet, the power of God touches you now. You are free. You are the delivered. Amen. And amen. In a few minutes, I want to pray for every one of you that has someone, a loved one or a friend incarcer incarcerated in prison or jail, going through a trial, a tough time, confusion, hurt, pain, loneliness. I want to minister to you. And then lost loved ones. That someone you know has gotten away from the Lord. You know, has gotten away from God. I should have quickly called and let me minister to that person. And then on the front of the broadcast, I saw a strong word for any of you that are in the midst of some type of a trouble, some type of trouble, some type of problem. God is preparing as we speak a blessing for you, a miracle for you. We're going to another incredible testimonial now, proof, evidence that Jesus is the Messiah. He is the Son of God that was to come. 
and he's coming back, amen, real soon. The signs of the times point to his second coming. This is proof. Now, while Mike is sharing his testimony, quickly call in that most urgent prayer request because in a few minutes I'm going to my altar. We're going to kneel in prayer. I'm going to tell you something. God's going to touch you like he did Robert and touch you like he did Mike. Watch this. This pain was like, if I had a, like a tight rubber band on my, on my head, you know, just squeezing my head, like it felt like it was going to explode. Hour after hour, Mike was trapped in a torture chamber of suffering. Searing headaches and excruciating back pain had become a way of life, a life that was almost cut short the day of Mike's near-fatal accident. I was cleaning the freezer because it was my, my job to clean the freezer, and my boots got filled up with ice in the bottom. Since my boot had some ice, I slipped, and I went sliding down the stairways, and I was banging my head on the stairways and laying on concrete with my head and then my back. Mike was not unconscious and immediately rushed to the hospital. All he remembers is waking up to a world of pain, unaware he was about to enter the nightmare of his life. When I woke up the next day, I had some blackouts, and I never did have no problem with my head. I started having some blackouts, and I couldn't see nothing. Everything just went black. But momentary losses of consciousness weren't Mike's only physical problem. He also suffered from uncontrollable seizures. I could be sitting watching TV with my kids, and all of a sudden, you know, I get a seizure, and you know, they'll start, you know, crying and everything because they weren't used to it. And plus, my back, you know, I couldn't lift up my little girl. Overwhelmed with frustration, Mike looked for a medical solution to his life of pain, but that too proved hopeless. All I can see, the pills and everything wasn't working, the therapy wasn't working, nothing was working. What he was doing, and then we on and on for a year and two months. For 14 months, Mike watched in agony. His life became a faint shadow of what it once was. Unable to work and barely able to contribute to his family, Mike felt his hope and his confidence slowly melt away. I was just going crazy because I couldn't do nothing. I felt hopeless for my family. It's the way I was feeling, you know, at the end, hopeless, like if I couldn't do nothing about it. While at home one day in his usual state of pain, Mike and his wife were watching television. They were about to hear a message that would dramatically change their lives. And then Robert Tilton said, there is a man out there that has, you know, back problems and head problems. And he said, matter of fact, he's iron right now too. And when he said that, me and my wife just turned and looked at each other. In faith, Mike reached out to God. He knew the Lord could release him from his torture chamber of pain. So me and my wife got in agreement with, you know, with Barbara Tilton so the, so the Lord could heal me. So when he started praying, he said, you know, put your hands on the TV. And, you know, we just looked at each other and said, well, you know, let's have faith and do it. So we went ahead and do it, as, you know, as a partner. And as soon as, when he, as soon as he finished praying, he says, get up and, you know, bend over and do things you couldn't do. Uh, I was amazed because I could touch my toes when I couldn't touch my toes or get up with my right leg. And since that day, I didn't take no medication or nothing. And from that day, I was healed. The miracle that he received that day was truly unforgettable. Mike's once hopeless heart now overflowed with joy. It was a miracle for us because everything was gone. My leg was, my pains on my leg was gone. My back was, my pains was gone. And my headaches were gone. My dizziness was gone. And everything was gone. So I was amazed and happy. And, and since that day, it's when I, I had my faith growing. And it's when I knew there was a Lord that was listening to my prayers because he met my prayers that day when we were listening to Robert Tilton. No longer under the powerful grip of pain, Mike went back to his job, and he returned to his treasured duties of being both husband and father. His urgent prayer to God for a miracle had finally been answered. I just went back to work and back to my normal life. That's all I wanted to do is go back to my normal life. That's what I was praying for, you know, be a dad and be a husband and take care of, you know, financial problems and everything. So it felt pretty good. So I praise the Lord for that, for opening my eyes, you know, to receive those miracles and to keep on sharing those miracles with everybody. With another miracle of faith from West Texas, I'm Ted Warren for Success in Life. Another Success in Life miracle through Jesus Christ and the power of praying in His authority. Many times people think that they pray to God in 
their name or their strength or their goodness or righteousness. We, don't pr we pray in the name of Jesus. All we do is have faith in the power, the authority, and the jurisdiction in heaven and in earth of that name. There was a man in the Bible, Peter and John were going together to the temple at the hour of prayer, and that's what this broadcast is today. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the temple. Every day that man watched them go into the temple to pray. <laughs> you know anybody like that? And that he looked at them and he asked alms of them. He asked them. And they said, well, we don't have any money to give you, but we got something else, the, the, the right to the use of the power and the authority to heal, to bless, that is in the name of Jesus. Amen, saints. And Peter and John said, look on us. Hey, you out there, look. And he gave heed, expecting to receive. That's a good sermon for somebody listening to me. He gave heed, he expecting, he asked. They said, hey, look, get ready. He expected to receive. They used the name of Jesus. Peter took him by the hand, and that's what I'm doing, taking you by the hand, leading you, helping you get back up on your feet, S S teaching you how not to see yourself as you were, are the circumstances as they are, but see yourself standing up in Jesus. Hallelujah. That's what I want to pray. You'll start, that God will touch your eyes so you can see yourself perfect, whole, beautiful, happy, healthy, blessed, prosperous, in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. But God will touch your eyes. Open your eyes. You have any kind of back problems, any type of tumors or seizures, I want you to call right now. I don't want you to sit there another minute. I want you to call in. And claim that word and get ready because God's going to heal your back in Jesus' name. If you'll just ask, that man ask, expecting to receive. Mm hmm You just ask. I've got faith in that name. Every one of you that are having problems with self-image, depression or oppression, okay? Your problem is how you see yourself. I want to pray that God will touch your spiritual eyes, open up your understanding to the new you, the son of God, the child of God, the heir of God, and touch you to begin to walk in that for as you are, as you see yourself, so as will you be. Begin to change your whole world. This is a powerful word for you that are having problems with your self-image. Okay? You've got a heart. You can believe God just a little bit of faith. Together we're going to touch God in faith believing. Then you that are facing some type of urgency, you have some type, you, you, I mean, you need a miracle. You've got troubles. I want you to call me. The Lord Jesus spoke to me audibly and told me to pray and agree with his people and use his name and release your miracle, your most urgent prayer request. And it's important for you to call. Why? Because throughout the Bible, people let their request be made known. The devil wants you to depend. When you're not strong enough to get your breakthrough, God's got, it says, let the weak bear the infirmity of the strong. Let the strong bear the infirmity of the weak. Out of weakness through their faith, it says in Hebrews 11, were they made strong. Our faith makes us strong. Akaba, as we learn to put our eyes on Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. 
And I'm going to lay my right hand on top of your prayer request. And that's you. Here is uh, Deanna. Just called in her praise report. Had heart problems. She's been healed. Praise God. Incredible praise reports are coming in. Here's Vera calling in from Connecticut. Lower back problems. Was healed after Pastor prayed yesterday. And I'm going to pray for every one of you that are sick. If you have seizures, thank you, Lord. Seizures. A child, any one of you having any type of seizures, and, 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 and from time to time, headaches, migraine headaches, and also pain in your lower stomach. There's someone watching me as we speak in their lower stomach. And I see thee now, saith God, having problems in the area of your heart. For know ye this day that I will heal thy heart if you will simply agree in faith with my servant as he uses my name, releases my will into your life in the earth, saith the Lord. See, as I begin to speak in tongues, the Lord said, there's a person watching who has problems in their blood and a person has problems in their heart. He wants to heal you. Quickly call and let your request be made known. In fact, in James it says, any sick among you, every one of you that are sick right now, sick, let them call for the elders of the church and they'll pray the prayer of faith. Pray the prayer of faith. Because at times you need someone to pray and agree with you. I mean pray and agree with you. Someone to agree with you in faith is touching your most urgent request. Here's another testimonial. Scott's calling in. Says he was at the end of his rope and through the prayers of this ministry, everything has changed. Prayer changes things. It changes people. And there's a person watching me. Part of your problem is you. Okay? Now it's not so much your fault. It's just that your mental image of yourself is bad. I don't mean just to be a, have a positive attitude. I mean start seeing everything about yourself in the, in, as God sees you through Jesus Christ. Destined to be conformed in His, transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is it. We, have a, we, be, we become changed. We're born again. We're a child of God when we accept Jesus. We're forgiven of our sins. We have the remission of our sins, and then we have continual forgiveness of our sins. But I want God to touch your eyes. And I'll just tell you, every one of you, it is scriptural to pray in Ephesians 1 that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you might know him in the power of his resurrection. And if the Apostle Paul can pray that prayer, Bob Tilton can pray that prayer for you in faith believing. Every one of you that are having a tough, that the, pray that it's 18 verse chapter 1 that the eyes of your understanding being lightened. Paul is praying here. And I want to pray and minister to you and lay my hand right here on top. This is you. You've called. You've released your faith. You've told God, God, I'm agreeing with Bob. You've told the devil he's a liar and he's, he, you're not going to listen to his lies any longer. Tell you something, sister, by the stripes of Jesus you were healed. Anything contrary to that is a lie. Even if it's a, that, it's a physical manifestation of sickness, it's still a lie because God's word be true and every man and every symptom and every vain imagination, a liar in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Here is Barbara's called in her, the boy from our church, received a healing miracle through your ministry. God healed him from spinal meningitis. The doctors have said he only had 72 hours to live. They called the prayer line, and thanks to the prayers, was totally recovered right there. Just came in. Hallelujah. The devil hates these testimonials. And by the way, it's important to call in the testimony. Rosalind from New Jersey, healed of breathing difficulties. Any type of seizures, quickly call. Any type of heart problems, any type of blood problems, any lower type of pain in the head, migraine headaches, any type of problem, inner ear, something, sometimes a problem with an ear, quickly call and claim your word of God. Here is uh, Lester from Hollywood, Florida. Oh, hallelujah. Orthodox Jew is now a born-again Christian. God's delivered him from drugs and alcohol, and he's now serving God. Hallelujah. May Jesus Christ, Messiah, the Lord and Savior of his life. Here's Pat from Kentucky. Took the prayer cloth that we mail out for anyone that would like to receive it. Took the prayer cloth to her church, and the church has not been the same since. She says there's a spirit of peace now in the church. The anointing broke the spirit. You should have called. Just then I saw a person. 
You should have called. I just saw a person who should have called. And I'll tell you what it's about. It's about someone close to you that took a job and is having problem on the job. There's a person you need to call, and we're going to break that spirit that's brought strife, that brought strife into that job situation. Here's Tommy. Caller asked for prayer for his ear. The next day, it just popped open. Amen. There's an anointing, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Here's Debbie. Called. Caller received an answer to prayer for a job. She says, I sent my request to Pastor Tilton. He prayed, and I got my job at work. Prayer worked, and now I know where God wants me to be. Amen. I want to pray the eyes of your understanding be opened, that you begin to have a revelation of who you are in Jesus as a, an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Amen. And your most urgent request. There's a person sitting there. You're so discouraged, you don't even feel like praying. That's why God's putting me on here. Why God's put me on the airwaves and partners, because God wants your prayer answered. But God, the Father, moves through the prayer in Jesus' name. In John, it says, John 14, And that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily I send you whatever you shall ask the Father in my name. He will give it you. He'll give it you. Boy, when I said that, I felt like someone heard it that God's talking to you today. Don't just sit there beat up. Get, do something. Get your, let your request be made known. If you'll just have a little bit of faith, that call is like your little seed. God, I'm so discouraged. You see me despondent. I don't think anybody cares. God's trying to talk to you today. I mean, today is a powerful day. I mean, God's trying to deliver you. God's trying to deliver that loved one. If you have a loved one you're concerned about, let's pray together today and stand in the gap for that person. We're going to another testimonial. And while Debbie is sharing, quickly call in your prayer request because we're about to go to my altar of prayer and we're going to start praying in Jesus' name. So call your most urgent request. If you have any type of problems with your heart or respiratory problems and inner ear problems and any type of depression or back problems and tumors, I love to attack those stupid tumors. I hate those devils. I hate those devils. Also, a very strong word of knowledge for people who have a tough time seeing themselves as God sees you. Loved, healed, blessed, successful. And I want to touch your eyes, that the eyes of your understanding be, be the eyes of your understanding be opened. And then if you've got a wallet or a checkbook, I want you to call in your prayer request, and when I pray, I want you to lay your wallet or your bills on top of my hand, because this anointing can get into that, and miracles begin to happen. And Jesus said, you have not, because you ask not. And he said, ask, and you'll receive, and your joy, like so many are calling in their praise reports, will be full. Now, here's Debbie. Watch this. She was used to the active life of a wife and mother, but when Debbie began having severe female problems, doctors confined her to bed. And I was deathly ill. I mean, I was getting so sick that the doctors didn't want me out of bed. they tell me to lay in bed, keep my feet up. They were afraid that I might hemorrhage. Debbie's doctors prescribed all types of strong medications to control her constant bleeding, but they only seemed to make everything worse. The medication was so strong, it would totally knock my equilibrium off to where I couldn't function. It would, um, I couldn't work, I had to leave my job, I could not work, you know, and function normally and, and have the responsibility to someone else. When doctors began discussing the possibility of dissolving her ovaries with radiation, Debbie decided it was time to look elsewhere for help. I was just getting sicker, I wasn't getting better. So I had um, had Bob on one day when I was just laying there watching the show, and there was a woman who had almost the uh, same problem as I was having. As Debbie heard the woman's testimony of how God had healed her from constant hemorrhaging, her faith rose up. When Robert Tilton began to pray for other women to be healed, Debbie immediately went to the television. I didn't feel anything spectacular or anything, or 
you know, anything that I could say. But, you know, like, for some reason, the next day, I just felt so strong. I just said, that's it. I said, God, I'm not going to lay in this bed anymore. I said, if this is meant to be, that something's meant to happen to me, then let it happen. I said, I'm getting up. I'm cleaning my own house. I'm cooking my own dinner. I said, I'm going to do the things like I used to do. I said, God, I'm not going to be sick anymore. Debbie grabbed her pills, threw them in the trash, and decided to stand on her healing. I never felt better. I had all this energy, and I just got better. And I just thanked the Lord, and I just thank you, Jesus, because, you know, I'm healed, and I'm going to stand on it that I'm healed, and I'm not going to let it happen to me again. And it hasn't happened since. I haven't had to see the doctor. Since that time, Debbie says she's back to her full busy routine, with everything unchanged except her faith. And I'm telling you, after that, I felt like I could move mountains. I don't care what you put in front of me. I was ready for it. With a miracle of faith from Central Florida, I'm Patty Castleman. Isn't it something that we can agree together and we can talk to God the Father and we can walk right into that throne room together through the name of Jesus. This man in Acts, he asked Peter and John for something. He asked. Then he expected to receive. And then Peter took him by the hand. That's why God sent me to you, to take you by, to help you get up. A little assistance, just a little help to get up. And Debbie made it, and you're next. Every one of you that just needs a little help, just a little bit of faith, in the name of Jesus, let me minister to you. It's an anointing. The presence of God will come upon you, and miracles will begin to happen. I want you to call me with your most urgent request. There's a woman watching me. You have female problems. And you've been to the doctor, and you know it's tough, and you just thought you're going to have to live with it. You don't have to live with it after today. You'll let me pray in Jesus' name. Put my hand on top of your most urgent request, your name, you. Every woman watching me right now that has female problems, you can be healed. If you'll just have a little act of faith, first call and let your request be made known. B, when I pray, expect to receive. Then Jesus himself is going to walk into that room and lay his hand on you and heal you. Isaiah 53 says, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed to? Is God revealing himself to you? His arm. We, we were in Brazil not too long ago, and we got to get these testimonies edited up. But so many people testified. They saw the hand of God reach down from heaven and touch their backs, wipe their eyes clear where they could see. If you have any type of eye problems, I want you to quickly call. I'm trying to get you to open your mouth. God said, open your mouth and he'll fill it. Any type of problems in your back, any type of female problems, it's strong words through the broadcast, any person's... Just, you're surrounded by troubles. There's also someone watching. God's preparing an answer before we call. He's already got the answer there. But we pray, any to agree, eight, Matthew 18, any to agree on earth. Any to agree on earth. There's also a person been having a terrible time in their finances. I want to tell you what, those devils have been eating your finances alive. Those devils have been stealing your blessings. And we can break that spirit of those principalities and powers. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Someone in their eyes, someone's got eye problems. The Lord's going to heal your eyes. Someone has eye problems. Quickly call and claim that word. Every one of you that have female problems, it's no accident that God put those two testimonials of that first woman, the little blonde gal, and the second one, that, that Debbie saw the woman, the blonde lady from Seattle who had female problems for years, thought she was going to live that away. God healed her. She gave her testimony. 
Debbie heard it. Debbie let me pray for her. And now she's given her testimony. Miracles produce more miracles. Blessings produce more blessings. Prosperity produces more prosperity. And we're seeing literally thousands of prayers answered through the prayer of faith of this ministry. Because I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus, for it's the power of God unto healing, unto salvation, unto prosperity for everyone that believeth, and to the Jew first and to the Gentile. Hallelujah. I love Jewish people. We have a great work over there in Israel. And we love that Jesus is the Messiah. That's the good, that's the exciting news. If you're Jewish, you don't have to wait for the Messiah any longer. He's already come. Hallelujah. And these miracles are proof that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. Now, Bo Williams is going to come and minister in song. And while Bo is singing, if you have not called in your prayer request, you're missing God because there's an answer to every prayer, a solution to every problem. Amen and amen. So quickly call, and then we're going to start praying. When we get, don't just sit there. You're going to be sitting in that same boat, that same chair this time next year. At least you get a little faith out. You get a little drawn eye to God, and he'll draw an eye to you. Now, here's Bo Williams singing. While Bo is singing, quickly call in your prayer request immediately. Father, I just want to thank you. Lord, you, you love me unconditionally. You... You gave your all for me, and what I can give back to you is so small, but Lord, it's all I got. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my mind. I give you my soul. I give you every part of me. Said if I would call, that you would answer me. I told you about my troubles, and Lord, you rescued me. And now I live my life. One day my reward will be to see your face. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my mind. With all of my strength, because you created you my heart, I give you my mind, give you my soul, I'll give you every part of me. Lord, your spirit, so I can see. Father, anoint my ears now, so I can hear you. I don't care what I have to do. I'm going to stick close to you. And where you lead me, I'm gonna follow Just show me your perfect will Lord, I give you my heart I give you my mind You give my soul Because you created me you my heart I give you my mind. my mind give you my soul I'll give you every part of me Lord 
Lord, she died on Calvary to set the captives free to give up my sins is not too much for what you've done for me now I just want to tell the world of your abundant love and grace you gave your sinless life to die in my place thank you for your amazing grace Lord I give you my heart I give you my mind Amen. Let's go to my altar. Taking a few more prayer requests are still coming in, but today is a day to minister the love of God to you. Any lost loved ones, I want to pray for them here. Any of you have seizures? Any of you have problems in the area of your blood? Any female type of problems? I want you to quickly call. You have not, Jesus said, because you ask not. Let your request be made known. The strong are to, to use their faith to help those that are weak in faith. If you'll believe these words today, just use a little bit of faith. When you call, that's an act of obedience, an act of faith. Your faith is cooperating with what you believe. God has a miracle for you. You have a checkbook, having problems with your bills, finances. Get your checkbook and your wallet and your bills ready because I'm going to stretch my hand out. The anointing of God. It's an anointing. It's, it's tangible. Remember when Elijah was dead and they buried him or threw, and they threw Elijah's bones on top, a dead man's bones on top of Elijah and there was a, so much power still in the dead anointing, still in the dead bones of Elijah that the dead man came back to life. It's power. It's anointing. And let's pray. You can still call in your prayer request. You can still call in. We're going to start praying right now. Put your hand on top of mine. If you haven't called in your prayer request, quickly call. Then we'll begin to continue to bring the prayer request in. Let's pray. Father, we come into your presence in the name of Jesus for Roel in Santa Ana, for Peggy in Carson, California, for Rhonda in Decatur, Georgia. Here's Nancy in St. Clair, Michigan. Needs healing. She had a horrible back. Here's Lisa. Wants the eyes of her understanding opened up attacked in depression. Here's James calling in from Claremont, California, healing in his back. Eloise from Torrance, lower back problems. Fred, back, head problems, can't sleep. Here's Rick, back and joint problems. Here's Cindy. We're going to pray and minister to these people. Father, you see all the other ones that are called, that are calling in. And Father, you see those women that's had problems with female God right now. As I pray in the name of Jesus, let healing flow through my hands. Jesus, walk in there now and heal them. Touch them. Oh, God, there's the anointing. There's like a fire flowing. The healing power of God healing you, my sister. The healing power. There's a back. Just then I saw a back begin to crackle and pop. There's a back being healed. There's like a heat flowing down someone's back, flowing from the back of their head all the way down your spine. God's also given someone like a Holy Ghost blood transfusion. God's healing your blood. I rebuke those seizures. I rebuke that spirit that would attack that woman, that man, that child. In the name of Jesus, 
And Father, you see these that are incarcerated, these that are in prison. Oh, God, minister to them. Let healing, salvation, and deliverance flow into them now and strengthen and help those, God, that are at home, that are having to go through the things that they do at home, God, separated from this loved one. God, minister to those in prison. Minister to those in prison. Minister to those in prison, even that one that is in prison right now watching me. God, minister to that man. Minister to that woman, that daughter, God, that child. Oh, God. Now let your love flow. Let your healing flow through my hand, God. Healing, healing into that stomach, into those lungs, those eyes. Oh, God, touch those eyes now in the mighty name of Jesus. Ears open in the name of Jesus. Pop open in Jesus' name. There's a lung being healed, something in a lung. There's a lung being healed. Father, I thank you, Father, for healing that lung right now, that one that needs deliverance, that one that's called in their friends to stand in the gap. God, I agree with them that you're answering that problem. And God, touch their eyes. Touch their eyes, Lord. Let the eyes of their understanding be open. They begin to see themselves resurrected in Jesus, healed, whole, delivered, blessed, prosperous, successful, victorious through every trial. I thank you, Father, for imparting into them the ability to hear your voice in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for this. Miriam has called in for prayer two weeks ago for a 63-year-old uncle who was having a heart transplant. The surgery was success. He's already home and praising God. Thank you, Father, for moving in these people's lives. In Jesus' name. Myrtle, here's yours. God's touching that heart. Just begin to thank him. In fact, all of you, let's just begin to praise the Lord. We worship you, Lord. We praise you, God. We thank you, Lord. Now begin to thank him. We begin to do what you couldn't do. Begin to move that knee. Begin to move that shoulder. Hallelujah. Just begin to worship God. We worship we worship you, Lord. Just begin to praise him. We praise you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Amen. Now, two things. First of all, every one of you, you can still call. If you didn't call in, every prayer request that comes in, we pray over. Number two, call in your praise report. Jesus, ten lepers were healed as they went, as they acted in faith. One came back and thanked Jesus. Jesus said, go and be whole. There's wholeness in sharing your testimonial, what God has done for you through this ministry. Call and give your testimonial and just share, just a few words, what God has done. Give glory, come back and give glory to God. And then those of you that are partners with us, those of you that are tithing, giving offerings, fulfilling your vow, let me hear from you today. We want to continue to stay on in your city be a blessing to you and your neighbors and all of those in your community and releasing the spirit of revival through the power of the preaching of the gospel. So let me hear from you today. Don't eat your seed. Don't say the vow was a mistake. It's not. At least God withdraw the angels. Keep those angels out there prospering you in your way. And be expecting God has prepared a blessing for you in the presence of your enemies. And I loose that now, that your, that your faith is touching this miracle in the midst of that trial and troubles. And don't forget, God loves you, and I love you. You've been watching Success in Life with Robert Tilton. It's our prayer that this program has been an inspiration and blessing to you. Remember, phone ministers are standing by waiting for your call 24 hours a day. Or write to Robert Tilton, Post Office Box 22066, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74121-2066. On behalf of everyone at Success in Life, be encouraged and God bless you.